Today's the day we're going to fly to Thurrock. It's a fair old uh, trip and it's uh, northeasterly. We're going to go through some of the most congested airspace in the UK, probably in the world really, southeast. We're going to fly, actually fly between Heathrow and Gatwick. So I'll show you how to negotiate around. And we're going to do it all without talking to air traffic control because we're going to be in the, what they call the open FIR. Class G airspace, it's uncontrolled, you don't have to talk to a controller, you don't have to file a flight plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of flight planning in the air and I'll show you how to um, get from A to B without necessarily um, doing a flight plan beforehand and that's useful if for example you have got a flight plan in mind and you need to vary it either for weather or fuel or you find that uh, you decide just to go somewhere else. Um, deciding to go somewhere else in the air is a little bit tricky because you do have to tell people um, that you're going to be arriving. People get very funny if you arrive without um, it sorting it out with them first. So I've had a, uh, I've rung up here and at Thurrock and told him that uh, I'm uh, expected. It's a it's a grass airstrip like this one. We're at uh, Olive Oil International, Sandown, and um, let's because we're going to do most of this planning in the air. Let's get cracking. So let's put down uh, 10 degrees of flaps, and just do our very very quickly. We'll do our um, pre takeoff checks. So we're just checking everything is. Um, looking good we've got uh, three quarter tanks it's 10 in the morning it's best to start this trip early um, because we're gonna have to catch a train the other end um, because we're not we're not bringing the plane back he's keeping the plane for the service so it's tem temperatures and pressures and uh, fuel flow and everything were on the ground so let me just check a B to uh, set the altimeter D to synchronize the DI and that's it um, Apart from um, frequencies, which, as I say, we're, we're not really going to talk to anybody, so um, we won't be worrying, bothering about the comms frequencies. So let me just put the brakes on, rev up a bit, hold it on the brakes a bit, check that it sounds and feels okay, and then off the brakes and full power. Plenty of right rudder to keep it on the centre line. As it speeds up, the airflow starts to dictate where the plane goes. It starts to act more like a, a paper dart, and so you get less of the uh, the um, precession effect, the sort of gyroscopic effect of the engine spinning. Oh, that's what the plane's there, look. See the clubhouse. Now we're climbing out at uh, 85 knots. You'll notice even sort of at less than 85 knots, we've still got a positive rate of climb. But um, once we get to 85 knots uh, stabilised, we've got about a thousand feet a minute. Now we're going to take up that um, last bit of flaps, and that then reduces the drag, so the plane will tend to go faster to prevent it going faster. We pull the nose back, and by pulling the nose back, we um, increase the rate of climb. The other thing, if I just push Shift A quickly, is um, we can turn off the fuel pump and we can turn off the landing lights. Because uh, we don't need either of those. The fuel pump you usually use when you're taking off, when you're landing, and when you're switching fuel tanks. We only have a single fuel system on this plane and the landing lights you really put on when you're landing you can put them on when you're taking off they're big sort of it's a big headlights usually on the left hand wing and um, it helps with visibility in the air when you're looking when a plane's flying towards you and certainly if you go to aircraft uh, airports and um, look at um, planes lining up to land you'll see it's all the landing lights it will be what you see that's not their normal navigation lights, that would be the landing lights. So we're going to level off at 2000 feet, so that's attitude power trim. 
So as we approach 2,000 feet, but, and also we we're going to want to stay below the clouds, obviously. So let's put our plane down so it's flying level. As it flies level, speeds up. As it speeds up, the wings generate more lift. So it's going to want to climb again. So we're going to have to just constantly adjust our attitude until we're going. And then obviously once you've got too much um, speed on, you can just drop the revs back a notch and that helps with the fuel flow. So if you look at the, um, the fuel flow here, and, and you can't really see it, but if you look at the RPM, you'll see that um, if I put up, uh, if I go to full throttle, just see, you see it's still in the green band here and in fact the, the fuel flow is is high, higher than you'd like it, for, but that's really just for economy purposes um, and the airspeed is, while, while all the time I'm flying level, it's still in the green band so what that's sort of saying is that um, I mean this is a beginner's plane to be honest with you is like something that you'd learn to fly in, or it might be plain, a private pilot might fly who, who uh, doesn't do much other flying, and um, so it's pretty difficult to sort of wreck it, you know what I mean, to fly it wrong. All I've done is I've adjusted the throttle so that the fuel flow goes down to the top of the green arc, and the fact that they've got green arcs is, you know, is just a sign of how helpful, helpful it all is. Now where are we flying towards? Well, we're not really. Well, I'm just drifting around. I'm just drifting northeast at the moment, and uh, we're over the um, Solent. There's the leaving the Isle of Wight behind us. See how quickly you lose control when you don't look out the front. And um, we're going to stick to 2,000 feet. We may well drop down below that um, in future, but I'm just going to head for that bit of land and then. Um, now, where where are we going to fly towards? Well, let's um, let's bring up the map. Alt World Map. Now the plane does pause while you're doing this, so you don't need to worry too much. Um, and you can see, um, as I said before, on my map, there's the land isn't shown because it's an early version of the scenery. So let's move out a bit and I'll just show you roughly where we're going. You see over here, uh, round about where it says SND, which is South End, that's where we're going. And now we could fly along the south coast and then cut north and that would be that would be fine. What, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go right through the middle here and show you how to fly through the middle. So let me zoom back in again. We need to be aiming for things and it looks like if we're going to fly through this gap, it looks like the VORs at Goodwood and Midhurst and Ockham are going to be our route, aren't they? So just um, I've got a, another couple of add-ons here. One is a piece of paper and the other one is a pencil. So I'm going to write down the Goodwood 11475, Midhurst 114 and Ockham one one five decimal three. Okay, lovely. Now, I I am pretty sure that they are going to give us distance information as well, and that's because they're sort of a hexagon inside a circle, uh, inside a square. Whereas some of these other ones, if we zoom in a bit further and just go up, some of these other ones aren't. So there's a square there, for example. There's a square there. So. Um, the first thing we need to do is to lock on to Goodwood, 11475. So let's go back to the flying. Now, you can do this with the mouse, and certainly with the later planes it's um, easier to do it with the mouse. But uh, in the days before, mice had wheels. You used to do it just by pressing the N key. So you press the N key and then minus, minus, minus. 
and then the N key again twice. Press N N, and then we want 0.75. So I'll go down to that. So there we are. 0.75 and then X to make that the active navigation frequency. And you see straight away that the um, the VOR indicates that it's picked it up by by uh, this triangle's pointing towards it. And it's telling us that if we want to fly towards it on the 340 radial, we're way over to the left. We need to fly to the right. And we don't care what radial we fly to it at. So I'm just going to choose. I'm going to ask it what radial we're on by just straightening that line up. And it's telling me we're on about the, the 046 radial, something like that. Yeah? fly into a bit of cloud. Okay. Let's not panic. We're not certified to fly in cloud. We haven't got a weather forecast. But at the moment what I'm doing is I'm flying it on the um, artificial horizon. Now you see here it's saying, well, we're drifting off. That, that radial that we selected, that we were flying down beautifully, we, we've missed it. It's gone. It's gone off to the left. So we need to turn left and find it again. We should have, that's because we were flying about 060 when we should have been flying about 045. Now the way to re-intercept it is to fly, obviously, to the left of the needle until such time as the needle comes back into the center. And 30 degrees is about as much as you want and 30 degrees is is one of these big it's what the numbers are all at 30 degrees intervals aren't they so we're about between 3 and 6 so 30 degrees to the left will be about between 3 and n north and 3 so we need to fly about in here between north and 3 now I know it sounds you know I mean when you start doing this you're going to start to think mm, I don't know I'd rather just carry on the way I'm going but really you've got to you've got to work the instruments when you're doing this You've got to trust what they tell you, and you have to take action based on um, on what you're reading. And sure enough, there we are. That we found that the original radio what we chose at random it just happened to be the radio we were on. We're now coming back towards it. Now, when we do come back towards it, then we have to take the other, the other we have the other action, which is now to turn back on to zero four five or zero four six. And all this twisting and turning and doing it all, you know, spot on 2,000 feet is the essence of instrument navigation. Um, and a lot of the the hard work of instrument navigation is taken out of um, um, out of out of you know a lot of the hard work is taken out of the job of instrument navigation by having autopilots and stuff like that. But this is all your autopilot is doing. It's just uh, now um, that's great. We can't see Goodwood, and in fact, for the, the way we're flying, really, we're not flying visually at the moment. So you know, that's fair enough. What we what we do know from here, from the DME, is that we're we're about three miles from Goodwood, so we've got there a bit quicker than we thought, haven't we? So now would be the time to start thinking about going to the next one, which I think was Midhurst, wasn't it? Which was one one four. So if we press N plus and then N and then plus 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 and then X, well, what we can do is um, we'll switch over. Then oh, so let's just watch the altitude. And then we're going to then we're going to have to um, find another radio, aren't we? So let's do it that way first of all. Now we've drifted off. You see, this is where the instrument flying is. It requires a lot of concentration. I'm 200 feet low, and I've drifted round to the right. And as a result, the radial I was following has bombed off to the left. And in fact, we're so close now to Goodwood. It's it's dubious whether we'll we'll, we'll ever reacquire it before we go past. But that's 1.1. I'm steering to the left of the radial, about 15, 20 degrees. 
and we might just whiz over it again look as it literally we're, we're, we're practically over the top of it so we're, we're covering an awful lot of radials at once at the moment. the radials are very very tightly packed uh, as they come towards as the spokes come towards the center of the hub that's it we've just gone over it so we did we did acquire it didn't we but then I didn't want to do a screaming right turn to get back on it now now we went over it and if you saw that that you've got it like a barber's pole and now the triangle's pointing down which means we're flying away from it and in fact we're flying on the 045 radial away from Goodwood now which is which is alright if that was the way we wanted to fly that would be good wouldn't it but it's not so let's switch over and wait until it picks up uh, Mayfield which is probably that way there we are and it's telling us we need to be steering about 020 so if we're a bit more prompt than we were last time about turning onto 020 we might not lose the radial this time so we're losing it a bit aren't we? Look, there we are so we'll go a little bit past 020 and then we should have it so that was a good we, we missed Goodwood on the way out because um, <laughs> because, we, uh, because we didn't dial the radial in we didn't dial the VO frequency in and ended up um, flying away from May, Mayfield um, instead of flying towards Goodwood and now we've found Goodwood and we still haven't seen it because um, we've ended up flying over the top of it in cloud let's get rid of that bar, oh, that's it just press and hold alt and that will go away now that radial, well not a spot on the radial but you know it's good enough for government work as they say and the other thing you have to remember is the wind of course we've got realistic wind in here um, and which is, as I said, in the UK, it usually prevails from the southwest. The fact that we're steering um, 20 degrees left of of the radial, and yet we're still we're still over to the right of the radial, could be one of two things. It could be that we're miles away, and in fact we're only eight miles away. So it's not that we're like 200 miles away, and, and the spokes are really uh, widely spaced out. Um, or it could be the wind we could have like a wind from the left so in fact what they could be telling us is that there is a wind from the left so that would be worth knowing or the other thing is it could be that the um, compass and the DI are completely gone out of alignment um, and you can check that as I say by if you're flying straight and level just look at what you've got on the compass um, which is sort of zero two zero, and then set zero two zero on here. Um, you have to do it while you're flying straight and level. There's no point doing it while you're turning. Well, this is pretty nippy and pretty responsive, and that's the idea. This is um, a ball that's literally responding to the Earth's magnetic field, which is extremely weak, and it's floating in a in a glass of oil or something. So, and it's very laggy. So it's almost never reads. <laughs> <laughs> the correct uh, correct heading unless you're flying straight and level and have been doing for five minutes or so um, so now what I'm going to do the next next one we're going to go to is 115 isn't it point three hello there's the ground so let's see if we can set up nerve two for that Let's press N2 minus N N2 N2 N N2. That's it. And then it would be exactly wrong, wouldn't it? Oh now we've got to keep down here. We're doing three things at the same time here. One one five point three and then X to transfer it. Now no, I'm gonna concentrate on not climbing first of all because we're, we're, pretty, we're getting pretty close to um, central London airspace and I do not want my license taken away for busting the Heathrow control zone 
So there we are, 2,000 feet, okay. Now we're 2.7, 2.6, we're very close. And um, what I'm going to do with the second one is work out what sort of radial, what sort of direction we're going to need to fly for the second one. So I've actually sort of pre-tuned in the second one now. I know it's pretty well timed to switch over to the second one anyway, to, to the second, to our next frequency, the 115 decimal 3. But I've got the 115 decimal 3 tuned in on the nav box 2. And um, as soon as that sort of goes down to nothing. Now watch for the barber's pole. Th there's the forward arrow pointing forwards. And we're, point we're counting down 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and there it went. Did you see it go there? Don't expect it to go down to zero because we're 2,000 feet away from it, don't forget. It's actually on the ground. So, and, it, and it doesn't adjust for that. It gives you the actual distance, and that includes your altitude. So now I'm, gonna, now I'm flying on box two here, see? And there's the pointy arrow on box two. It's got a different display, hasn't it? But it works exactly the same. This one now we're, we're disregarding. This one, we're just now working on this one. And in fact, we can get um, DME, the distance measuring equipment, to measure to the second one now by clicking this from R1 to R2. So it's measuring the distance to the fre this frequency here, 115 decimal 3, as, and the direction to it is displayed on here. Now there's an airfield there, isn't there? Let's just make sure we are 2,000 feet high. If we're going to go over the top of it, now we've gone over Goodwood, we've gone over Midhurst, and uh, we're now on our way to Ockham. Probably Dunsfold. Wouldn't swear to it. But um, it's nice to know it's down there. Now the thing about Ockham is that when when we, we've got Gatwick on the right hand side now. And Gatwick owns this airspace. They own everything two thousand five hundred feet upwards. I don't think we'll be able to see Gatwick. But it's over there. So we really mustn't go more than 2,500 feet now on the regional pressure setting. So I'm going to stay at um, 2,200, 2,300. I'm going to go north a bit because we don't want to clip the edge of uh, the Gatwick airspace that's, that's down to the ground. Now what you can see in, right in front of us over there I think is Heathrow and in Heathrow we're going to have to take a bit of a right turn for Heathrow because when we get to Ockham the 115 decimal 3 we're going to have to turn right and uh, go pretty well straight east with, um, Gap, with Gatwick on our right and Heathrow on our left Yep, that's definitely Heathrow. Okay, starting to get a bit nervous now. We're 10 miles away from um, Ockham. And the one, the next one after that is Biggin Hill. And Biggin Hill is 115.3. So, let's dial in 115.3. So, N plus... N N plus plus 
plus, 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 minus, minus, whatever, and then X to make that the active frequency. Now, I'm not at all sure that's picked that up, so we are a way away from it. Um, what you can do is you can switch over to R1 and see if anything happens. And nothing's happening, so I'd be inclined to say that that's not picking up uh, Biggin Hill. Is it 5 decimal 3? No, it's 115 decimal 1. This is the sort of problem that you have. Now, rather than put 115 decimal 1 in this other box and swap it over, just swap it back to standby. And then press N, N, and then go down, and then N, and then X, sorry, to, and then that swaps it back. Now, now have a look. Now, do you see, now that's far more reassuring, isn't it? Oh, we've done it, haven't we? We've done it, we've done it, we've done it, we've bust the airspace. Oh, my God. Oh, dear me. They've got that on radar as well. We'll be grounded. We'll get a, someone, as soon as we land, we'll get a phone call about that. That's why they don't like private pilots. Because we're rubbish at what we do. Right, I'm going to steer 045. So oh, there's no point crying over spilt milk. I'm going to steer 045. We're about five miles away. So I'm going to. Um, that's it, reacquire that VOR. Perhaps they didn't notice. But they bloody did. <sighs> and then, um, I always turn the dial towards the needle. No, you don't. That's it. Yes, you do. Now we could, if we wanted to cut cut across now, we could cut across and um, and go straight to begin. But in fact, we'd be cutting across um, the Gatwick airspace because the the Occam VOR is well actually the, the sort of the, the Midhurst Occam route is is pretty well there for you to fly straight down to get you between Gatwick and Heathrow so you don't want to sort of bu start buggering about with it and we're at Occam now aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty well at Ockham now, so we're um, only a mile away. Um, I think that's the M25, isn't it? The London Ring Road. Certainly you can see Heathrow now, can't you? You can see why they get nervous. I mean, I'm nervous. They should be more nervous than me. I mean, I know I can't fly. They don't. Anyway, we're 0 0.6 nautical miles. Point seven. Oh, we've gone past him. Okay, just turning right here. Nothing to see. Would have carried on flying into Heathrow, wouldn't we, if we carried on that way? Now this has changed, obviously, because we've been flying north. So I'm going to adjust that, and it's telling me we need to fly sort of slightly um, north of east. So we'll do that. Now we haven't done a Frieda check. Normally every turning point you do a Frieda check, which is fuel, um, radio, engine, DI, and altimeter. So let's just... Uh, fuel we've got plenty of. The um, radio is both comms radios and radio navigation. And uh, we're tuned to 105 decimal 10. Now if we want to double check that, we can ident it, which is just turn on the 
radio, um, the, the audio signal that's associated with it. Now, because it's big in hill, we expect it to be big, aren't we? Big. And I know I is dot dot. And I know. So B is a dash and three dots, because it's a dash for the long stroke of the B and then three dots for the three bits that come out the side. Oh, keep down, keep it down, keep it down. We've busted it twice now. There's a gliding strip down. I think that's Kenley, that might be a gliding strip down there. Yeah, so we've got BI and um, G sounds like two dashes and a dot. It's a good idea to learn Morse code. You don't actually have to learn Morse code. Let's just listen to it one more time. It's definitely two dashes and a dot. So we know we knew B and we knew I, so now we know G and eventually you, you pick them all up, you know. You don't have to learn Morse code. You do have to learn um, the um, Alpha Bravo Charlie, you know, the phonetic alphabet, because you'll you'll be expected to um, to know that because for for air traffic control purposes. Uh, so you do look a bit of an idiot if you start saying um, C for um, cookie and uh, S for sugar. They don't like that. But. Morse code don't not really. Now Biggin Hill, right now Biggin Hill. Okay. We're seven point four miles away from Biggin Hill. We're bang on the radio. So I would expect to overfly Biggin Hill. Now I don't know if you can see over here there are some buildings. That might be Biggin Hill. It might be Biggin Hill. In fact, it does look like it might be Biggin Hill because you see the radials telling us just to slightly turn left. So I'm going to sort of fixate on that point. And this is the thing about VFR navigation. When you're flying VFR, the best way to do it, and the way to stop yourself weaving about all over the place, which is what I do, is to look at a spot on the horizon, like a field or something. There's always something that you can fixate on and fly straight towards it. And make you know, make sure it's 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 pretty much the direction you want to fly, and you will naturally adjust for the wind in the same way as if you are skidding in a car or uh, 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 sailing or even walking. If you walk across a field towards something that's moving, you will automatically adjust, won't you, to arrive at the same point as, as the thing you're tracking, and you are moving in this, or rather, you're moving and it's not. You're moving in the air. So, you fixate on something, the further away the better. And you just fly towards it, and you can see that our um, direction here now is very, very good. Look at that, we're tracking great. This is absolutely perfect, everything's perfect. Because we're, we're tracking towards it. And then, when you get towards it, like for example, when it gets to be as close as this field down here, then you pick something else on the horizon, and you fly towards that. And it's very rare that there's nothing on the horizon that you can fixate on and fly towards. And that's the essence of VFR navigation, at least um, in a straight line. And when we get to begin, we're going to have to turn left. I cheated a bit there, did you see that? Because I've got a map here, and I got the frequency for the begin off off of my map. If you you can, if you develop contacts with your local airfield, and most aviators are a really really friendly bunch of people. They are naturally suspicious of people who hang around the airfield who don't own aircraft, <laughs> because they, you know, there's there's a, there's a fair bit of hostility towards private flyers as well. So they just like to know who you are and what your agenda is. Um, but assuming that, um, you know, you do it the proper way and you ring up the air, airfield owner and have a chat with him and tell him you'd like to come down on a Saturday morning when they're all there and just, you know, see what goes on, make it clear that you're not hostile. Um, you'll find a tremendous amount of help there 
and also um, every year everyone has to get a new map and every year everyone has to get a new directory of uh, airfields and, and if you ask nicely you could very easily get an old map when I say old I mean like current but just like one year out of date just the last issue or the old directory of airfields and you can you can get pretty much all the stuff that a pilot would have in his flight bag certainly for the local area anyway so there's Biggin Hill now I'm going to um, pause it here or alt wm world map just to have a quick look and see how we did now actually I'm quite pleased with that because you can see you can see here's we've gone through Goodwood we've gone through Midhurst we overflew Dunsfold didn't we? I said it was Dunsfold didn't I and then we turned left as I said because we I was worried about infringing the controlled airspace which goes down to 1500 feet then we um, went, we wobbled towards Ockham, and we turned right, and then, um, when, and now we're pretty much uh, over Biggin Hill, and we've got uh, Gatwick on the right, and we've got Heathrow on the left here. Actually, that's London City. This is Heathrow. In fact, it doesn't show the Heathrow airspace here. There should be a um, big block of airspace here for Heathrow. It's got the London City extension on it. Now, what we're going to do, we need to fly to um, Thurrock, and Thurrock is, as, as I say, is a small grass strip, and we're going to need to navigate to it visually. And, um, but having said that, we can get a sort of a, a fix on it by using the VOR system. Now, I don't think Thurrock's going to be on this map, but South End is, and South End is um, Thurrock is about here yeah so really what we want to do is we want to tune into Lambourne which is another VOR which is on Stapleford airfield and tell it that we're looking for an airfield that is something like is on in terms of a bearing from um, Lambourne is probably about 160 degrees and however many miles and that constitutes a fix. Now we can also define it in terms of the fix from South End. We can always say it's on the it's on a bearing of about two sixty degrees from South End and it's about twice as many miles, you know, twenty miles or something. And with one fix is would be enough. With two fixes is plenty. So what we're going to do is um let's see if we can define this in terms of a fix. So I'm gonna get my book of airfields. And Look up Thurrock. Thruxton Tatton Hill Thruxton I oh yes, well, it would be after that, wouldn't it? But in fact it's not because it doesn't exist in the book. Now why doesn't it exist in the book? because it's too small now that's not necessarily a problem because there is um, a list of airfields in the back of the book which are too small to go into the main section and here it is Thurrock Echo Gulf Mike Tango and it gives you the north and east coordinates it's uh, five nautical miles southwest of Basildon, which is great if you know where Basildon is. We don't happen to know where Basildon is. Um, and it's open from sunrise to sunset daily. It's on. Now, here we are. This is the bit we want. LAM 115.6, 131.10.3. That's not the shipping forecast. What that's doing is it's telling us if we tune into Lambourne, which is 115.6, it's on the 131 radial at 10.3 miles okay so that's brilliant so what we want to do is um, when we get to uh, Biggin Hill I think we've got to we can turn sort of northeast we can we'll turn northeast and we'll intercept that radial that 131 radial and then we'll fly up it and then when we're 10.3 miles from Lambourne we'll know we're over the top of Thurrock piece of cake so oh, there we go. Okay. Now.
Ooh. Let's not uh, let's not crash into Biggin Hill. It's had enough excitement in its long history. Now we're still underneath the London Terminal Control Area and we will be all the time until we land at Thurrock. Thurrock itself is underneath the um, London Terminal Control Area. Well, we've got the DME for um, Box 2 so I'll just switch back to the... Um, oh, let's go down, 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 down. Here we are, 1.1 miles. Oh dear. 0.7. Watch the triangle. 0.6. Down, 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 down. And that's it, gone, swapped. So now we're going to turn and, and we're pretty well going to fly northeast, which is uh, 045. This plane doesn't want to descend, does it? You think that um, flying a plane, the biggest problem will be keeping it up in the air, but it's not. The biggest problem is, is getting it down on the ground when you want it on the ground. That's it, northeast. So we're flying northeast. Now, have you got those? Did you get those two add ons that I suggested? The pencil and the piece of paper. 115.6. That's not a communications frequency, that's a nav frequency. And I'm going to keep this tuned into um, Big In Hill. 115, isn't it? Well, we don't need to. I was thinking it'd be nice to see what radio we're flying away from it at, because you could you could uh, track a radio away from it, couldn't you? In fact, I could track the zero three zero, the zero the zero two zero radio away would keep me clear of the London City airspace. So that set the zero two zero radial away, right? And I'm, if I wanted to intercept it, I'd have to turn left, which basically means I'm over to the right of it, which is great, because all the time that needle's over to the left, I'm fine. It means I'm not in the London City airspace. Now the other thing, and the real thing, is the 115.6. So let's just swap these back, and I'm going to press N2. That's already 115. N2. I'm going to get this right in a minute. I don't know whether I pressed N22 or whatever. Anyway, I know I'm in the right thing, so it's, we need to set that to 115.6 and then press X to make that the active frequency. And we said it was the 131 radial, didn't we? So we have to dial this to 131. I reckon that's about there. Now don't expect this to be precision navigation because it's not. You know, you can the, the, the miles and everything. I'm going to put the mileage on um, radial two because we want to get this down to 10.3. In fact, I'm not entirely convinced that that's picked up Lambourne yet because it's pointing backwards, isn't it? So we're not uh, we're not going to get too excited just yet. I'm just going to keep to the right hand side of this radial by flying. We need to fly something like uh, 050. Let's not get too high. 050. That's the uh, bridge across the River Thames. This is the River Thames in front of us here. And that's the bridge across the River Thames. And there's a tunnel there. It used to be a tunnel for a long time, Dartford Tunnel. And um, 
then the traffic got so much that they built the bridge and it's one of those bridges that's paid for itself, it's a toll bridge, it's one of those bridges that's paid for itself years ago and yet they're still using it as a cash cow now. All the taxpayers who pay for it were told that uh, charges would be temporary. Look at how high. Now we're climbing, we're really climbing. I don't know why that is. I'm going to have to, I'm trying quite hard to, uh, there's all the toll booths down here. I'm trying quite hard to descend. I'm not adjusting the um, engine note. As you descend, of course, you pick up speed. And so the propeller speeds up because um, it's having to do less work to push the air past. So you'll notice that uh, the RPMs speed up as you as you dive. That's not because I've throttled the engine up. Yeah, and that's all the all the toll booths and everything down there. So one one five decimal six. We're okay in terms of uh, staying out of the London City airspace. If we look down the Thames. You see London City there. See it? They put a sort of a stub round the Heathrow airspace when they built London City. This down here is Canvey Island. It's an oil refinery. Where they bring the oil on shore. So we're clear of the uh, airspace. We're 13.1 miles away from Biggin. And I'm not at all sure that I've picked up Lamborn. Let's do Nav 2. Now I know A's dot dial. And I know M's is, I think is two dashes. So let's just listen to that again. That's it. I've got AM, so I presume that the first bit is L. So we have got Lambo. Good. Now, we're going to have to work out how to interpret this, because it's showing correctly from because if we wanted to fly to Lambourne, we wouldn't fly um, 130. 130 is, is um, south. So, there's a lot of confusion over whether or not to turn left or right on these things. Let's just switch this over to 2. We're 9.3 miles away which is actually closer than we should be. So we shouldn't be actually flying to Lambourne at all at the moment. We should be flying away from it. And this is where it can get pretty and we're starting to infringe on the um, the London City airspace. So this is the point at which you don't you, you mustn't panic. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut the throttle a bit because if we're going to we don't know where we're going. There's no point getting there quickly, is there? And you sort of your you sort of inclination at this point is to start madly looking around for airfields and thinking, "Oh my God, where is it?" Now, in fact, by a complete fluke, I found it. Here it is. Look, it's here. Look. So our navigation wasn't too bad, was it? In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over the top of it and find out in, in the flight simulator world how accurate that is. Because you see that that radial is coming good now. We've been flying on a 060 which is to the left of it and it's coming good. Which basically means that you can continue providing the triangle is pointing the right way and don't worry if this is confusing at first. Providing the triangle is pointing the right way. In other words we're, we're flying a from radial now that we're flying up a from radial, not up a to radial. Because we're flying up a from radial, everything works as normal. 
So if we want to, if, if it's in the middle, we fly the middle. If we want, if it's over to the left-hand side, then we fly left to, to reacquire it to get it back in the middle. And I reckon we're, we're pretty well over the top of it there. And what have we got? We've got, there we are, look, 10.3 on that radial. Absolutely perfect. So that's how to find somewhere using just a radial and a distance. And we didn't even do it on the main box, did we? We did it on the, on the secondary box. So it looks like we're flying pretty well parallel to it now. So I'll go, I'll cut the old throttle a bit. Now you see we're out of the green, we're out of the green arc on the throttle, aren't we? Let's just bang left and then bang right. If you look down here, you can see that we're down, we're about 1700 RPM. We're not in the green what's it. And um, we're in the flap arc, so I'll drop the first degree of flaps. Um, and that's not a problem if it's for a reason. I mean, if you're descending, um, then obviously you're going to have to throttle back more than 2100. That's the normal operating range in the cruise. It's not, it doesn't... I mean, you couldn't re really run the engine for any length of time uh, less than that because it would sort of oil up. I'm going to keep an eye on that strip. There it is. Just the other side of the golf course. When you um, start to find these strips, that's really when you can call yourself a, a private pilot. Because when, when you, you'll set off for some places and have to fly back, you'll never find them. That's why you always make sure you've got as much fuel on as you can get. So Thurrock, again, it'll only they'll, they'll have a frequency. Someone will be listening on a a scanner but um, they won't um, you won't get a response so you just say Tharic Golf Bravo Alpha Foxtrot Mike final to land and once again it's orientated southwest because there's south there's west so it's southwest quite often these strips are quite wide and they'll have they'll use one half of the strip for landing and then the next year they'll use the other half by which I mean the left side and then the right side. So um, I think you can probably see that it looks like they're using the left side, doesn't it? So you always land where the, the numbers are. So brakes are off, undercarriage is down, mixture's rich, fuel we've got plenty is on sufficient for a go around, and uh, everything looks fine patches and harnesses. Going to drop the third uh, load of flaps. That's a road there because the road goes quite across. It's always funny if someone's driving along a road and then all of a sudden uh, they see a light aircraft come over about zero feet. to tell Ian about the strobe and everything. Anyway, we'll have it back soon. It won't be long. It's slightly uphill, isn't it? Look. Put a little bit of power in. Just feed a bit more flaps up. Now We've done that better. We could have we could have done a pre-landing checklist and put the landing lights on and the fuel pump and everything. Should have done that really. Still, we were safe. That's the main thing. Here we are. And let's park here. Now, um, I a couple of things I would say which is put the brakes on you can get the frequencies and things from the map as you fly along um, you can as 
so you don't have to file a flight plan or anything before you fly. If you want to flight plan before, then do. And I think probably, I mean, certainly for a trip of this sort of length, I would have planned, uh, would have normally planned it. But uh, I just wanted to show you how you can get information in flight. Um, the other thing is that, that was quite a long flight. I mean, we've literally gone from the middle of the south coast up to the um, uh, to Essex. So we've flown right across London. Um, and it's not taken us too long. It's taken us less than an hour, I think. So you can get caught out a bit by exactly how quick you're moving because you're flying. I worked out that to get from Kent down to the Isle of Wight in a car in the same time are on roads, sticking to roads. I'd have to be driving about 400 miles an hour. And you're not used to navigating at that sort of um, that sort of speed. So we went uh, very quickly, didn't we, from Goodwood to um, Ockham, etc., etc. You know, through the through the old uh, the VORs. So no, don't. Uh, this is not sailing. Okay, <laughs> don't get uh, fooled by the speed of it because it will all happen extremely fast and that's why planning is um, such a an, um, so important in flight so um, we're going to catch a train into London now and then um, change and get the high speed one train back to Kent so um, and then when the plane's ready Ian will give us a ring and um, we can get back on the train or we might even be in London just um, he, he, he's a nice chap here and he'll give us a lift down the station so I'll um, let you know as soon as the plane's been checked over and we'll decide where we're going to go next alright, talk to you soon